Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I am Gulapsa, your mentor and I welcome you once again to another very important series where we talk about the finance related current affairs in the series called RBI 247. So in today's session, we are going to discuss two very important news articles. The first talks about the ways and means advances that has been decided by the RBI and the central government in consultation with each other and the second news that is about NBFCs. So we are going to talk about both of them in today's video. So let's get started. So the very first news says that WMA limit for government of India that is the central bank has been that is the central government has been decided for the second half of the financial year 2023. So what are this WMA? So WMA stands for Ways and Means Advances and these are a kind of temporary loans which are provided by our central bank that is the Reserve Bank of India to the governments. Now these governments could be either the central government or the state government. But as of now RBI in consultation with the government of India that is the central government has decided the limit for the WMA. So the advances limit has been set for the second half of the financial year 2023 and the limit that is set for the central government is rupees 50,000 crores. So what are what is this WMA? What are the types of WMA? And what is the purpose of introducing this WMA? All of these will study in the very next slides. But before that, let us see what is there in the news. Now, the RBI has also said that if the government of India utilizes 75% of this 50,000 crores, then in that case, RBI has the right to issue more of the market, more of the loans in the market. So RBI can also issue more of WMA for the government of India if government of India utilizes 75% of this limit. Okay. Uske alawa, the RBI also retains the flexibility to revise the WMA limit. So both the central bank and the central government come together in consultation and they decide an amount, the limit for WMA. This limit can also be altered and it can also be changed at a later date if both of them feel so. This is what it has been mentioned here. Now, any kind of money or finances that is provided by the central bank to the government is not free of cost. Certain interest is being charged by the provider to the borrower. So in the case of WMA, which is provided by the Reserve Bank of India to the central bank, the applicable interest, re interest rate on the WMA will be the repo rate. As you all know, repo rate is the rate at which the central bank of a country lends to the commercial banks. So at the same rate, the policy rate, that is the repo rate, the interest will be charged from the government. Second is if these loans which are being taken by the government exceeds three months. What is overdraft? If you're not repaying the amount, in that case, it is known as overdraft. Now you must have heard about the current account whereby you can take money against that account even if you do not have money in that account. That is known as overdraft. So if you take this advances for more than 3 months, that is more than 90, day, 90 days, in that case RBI will start charging a rate that will be 2% above the repo rate. So the repo rate hoga. for example, agar 5.9 is the repo rate, then 5.9 plus 2, that is 7.9 percent will be the applicable interest rate being charged on the advances extended by the government. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's move forward and talk about these ways and means advances. Now these are very special instruments that are introduced in the Indian economy and it was basically introduced for the governments, be it the central government or the state government, in order to provide them a way out in case if they face any kind of temporary shortage of funds. So, sometimes you can see that the government faces shortages of funds whenever there is some kind of distress in the economy or taxation receipts that they receive is not up to the mark. In that case, what governments used to do before 1997 was they used to take up they used to issue government securities and against that government securities they used to raise money from the market but 
government securities involved certain problems such as high rates of interest that it had to give to the public. So, in the year 1997, the WMA scheme known as the Ways and Means Advances Scheme was launched by RBI whereby RBI provides temporary loans to the government of India, to the government of India as well as the state governments if they require so at a rate that is as low as our policy rate that is the repo rate. I hope this is clear to you. The next stage, what are the purpose of introducing WMA? So simple in order to meet the mismatches in the receipts and payments of the government. So whenever there is shortage of funds in order to meet the payments against the receipts that the government has, the government can take ways and means advances, a kind of temporary loan from RBI. Now is RBI authorized to extend such loans to the government? Yes, it is authorized under section 17.5 of the RBI Act 1934, whereby it states that the central bank can extend loans to the government provided they are subject to being repayable by the government within a period of three months. So if the government repays it within three months, then RBI has been entrusted to make or to provide loans to the government. Now moving forward and talking about how does it work. So whenever government faces shortages, government can approach RBI in order to avail any kind of immediate ca cash from the RBI. And this uh, temporary loan that is being extended by RBI needs to be returned back to RBI within 90 days, that is three months. What will be the applicable interest rate? So the applicable interest rate in case of WMA will be just the repo rate, the existing repo rate. However, if you do not repay the loan, if the governments do not repay the loan, in that case, a, penal a penalty rate will be charged and that penalty rate will be repo rate plus 2%. So what is whatever is the existing repo rate plus 2% will be the interest rate levied on any kind of overdraft. So if you exceed 90 days, that loan amount will be treated as an overdraft and on that overdraft, an interest rate of repo plus 2% will be levied. Simple. Now let's move forward to the WMA limit. So who sets this limit? As we are talking about that for the second, uh, for the second half of the financial year 2023, the rep, the WMA limit has been set up at 50,000 crores. So who decides this? So both the central bank and the government. So both come together and is decided by the government and the RBI mutually. And these limits which are set for the WMA can be revised periodically. So whenever they want, they can revise the limit. They can either increase or decrease the limit of WMA. Next is the types of WMA. So there are two kinds of WMA. The first is uh, normal and the second is special kind of WMA. Now this special kind of WMA is also known as special drawing facility because these kind of temporary loans are provided against certain collaterals. Now the collaterals are the government securities that are held by the state. State here refers to both central and the state government. So if any kind of temporary loans in the name of WMA is provided by RBI, then that loan will be known as special drawing facility and the interest applicable on these kind of WMA will be very lower. It, it will be 1% lower than the repo rate because these are considered to be less risky as collateral in the form of government securities are attached to such kinds of loans. So ye jo bhi interest rates applicable hai, that should be very clear to you and it should be there in your head because questions are being asked from here. So in case of normal WMA, it is the repo rate. In case if it is taken against certain collateral, that is the government securities, it will be repo rate minus 1%. If you exceed the time limit that is of three months, then in that case, you need to pay a penalty rate, which will be repo rate plus 2%. I hope these three rates are clear to you. And what is normal W? Uh, normal WMA. So if so, there is a certain limit for this special kind of WMA. If you exceed this limit, if you exhaust the limit of SDF, then whatever loans that you are taking in the form of WMA will come under the normal WMA. And the limit will be decided based on the state's uh, expenditures and revenues 
फॉर द पास्ट थ्री इयर्स तो एवरेज निकाला जाएगा तीन सालों का एंड वॉट एवर इज द एक्सपेंडिचर एंड द रिसीव डिफरेंसेज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फॉर द पास्ट थ्री इयर्स देयर एवरेज विल बी टेकन इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द डब्ल्यू एम ए लिमिट ठीक है नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट द वेरी न्यूज the next news article that talks about rbi releases a list of nbfcs in the upper layer now these nbfcs are very important topic from your examination point of view because as we know these nbfcs have started uh, working like banks and their activities and business business related uh purposes are very much akin to what banks do and because of the level of risk involved and the interconnectedness that they have with the you no know, with the scheduled commercial banks they become very important and that's the reason why RBI has issued a scale based regulation framework known as the revised regulatory framework for NBFC last year that is in the month of October 2021 RBI released a separate a framework for nbfcs because and we because of the importance that nbfcs have in the entire financial market they are also a source of credit intermediation apart from that they also provide certain activities which are very much closer to what banks do theek hai now according to this framework that rbi had released for nbfcs in order to regulate them much better rbi had actually uh categorize the nbfcs into four layers so based on the size of the nbfcs the net worth of the nbfcs the activity that the nbfcs are doing and the perceived riskiness that these nbfcs are having based on these three factors rbi has categorized them into four different layers so at the bottom we have the nbfc base layer then we have nbfc middle layer then nbfc upper layer and finally we have nbfc top layer now the entire discussion about nbfc and the four different categorization has already been done in the june current affairs video so you can go there you can watch the finance current affairs rbi 247 for the month of june where we have discussed in detail about all of these categorization today we will only talk about the upper layer since the news relates to the upper layer so nbfcs in the upper layer will be talking about in today's session now what is nbfc upper layer now nbfc upper layer has or contains more risk as compared to the middle and the lower or the base layer what does all what all nbfcs are included in the upper layer so it comprises of all those nbfcs which are specifically identified by rbi so rbi specifically identifies certain nbfcs based on a parameter parametric scoring so based on certain kind of parameters and scoring methodology rbi tries to identify certain nbfcs and these nbfcs are put together into one place known as nbfc upper layer now what is this methodology so here parameter based scoring is being calculated and the parameters are categorized into either quantitative or qualitative the weightage which is given to the quantitative parameter is 70% and to the qualitative is 30% what all are included in quantitative parameters so three important parameters are there first is the size and the and the amount of leverage these nbfcs are having second is the interconnectedness to the banks how much are they connected to the commercial banks are included and third is the complexity complexity how complex are these nbfcs talking about the qualitative factors the qualitative parameters which has a weightage of 30% includes the nature and the type of liabilities what type of liabilities are these nbfcs having the exposures that they are having in the terms of on balance sheet and off balance sheet the type of group structure is it a holding company or what kind of structure these nbfcs are into and third is the segment penetration in what all segments are these nbfcs working so these are the qualitative and the quantitative parameters based on which rbi tries to specifically identify whether it will be an upper layer nbfc or not apart from that rbi has also stated that irrespective of any other factor irrespective of even this methodology the top 10 eligible nbfcs in terms of their asset size so 
In terms of ranking based on asset size, the amount of assets that these NBFCs are having, the top 10 will be included in the upper layer. So first 10 will be in the upper layer. Simple. Now let's move forward and see the list that RBI has released for the NBFCs to be included in the upper layer. So RBI has released a list of 16 NBFCs which are to be included in the upper layer and RBI has laid down certain timelines for these NBFCs to incorporate the required parameters, the required factors that they are required to incorporate as an upper layer NBFC. Now if you see the category of these NBFCs then these NBFCs are either a housing finance company deposit and non-deposit taking housing finance company or a CIC that is a core investment company and third is the NBFC ICC investment and credit companies. Now what are these what are these technical jargons let us discuss one by one. First and foremost is the housing finance company. Now the name itself is very clear. Any kind of company that is incorporated under the Companies Act and whose financial assets is to provide loans or provide finance for housing or construction works or renovation repair of residential activities will be known as a housing finance company. So these are NBFCs which are registered as a company under the Companies Act and they provide or extend loans for financing the housing sectors be it reconstruction, purchase or renovation repairs. Now there are certain specific conditions which are laid down for the housing companies. The first is that their total financial assets out of their total financial assets, at least 60% of it. So out of its total assets that they are having, at least 60% should be such which are or which are related to the housing finance. So jitne bhi unke paas assets se, if rupees 100 crore assets that they are having, then 60 crores should contribute to the housing finance. Apart from that, of the total assets that is 100 crores, at least 50% should be given as a way of housing finance for individuals. So individuals ko aapko 50% loan uh, provide karna hai in order to meet their housing requirements. I hope housing finance company is clear to you. Now let's move forward and talk about ICC. NBFCs, ICC that is investment and credit companies. So basically in the year 2019, RBI amalgamated or merged these three types of companies, these three special NBFCs into a single term known as ICC. So what is ICC? It is a kind of financial institution that whose primary business or principal business is to finance the assets, is asset financing. Second is providing loans, making loans and advances and third carrying out any kind of investment related activities. So, ye teen cheese included hai hamare NBFC ICC mein. Let's talk about the first that is asset financing companies. Naam se hi clear hai, these NBFCs finance physical assets which supports productive or economic activities. For example, tractors ho gaya, ya kuch aise physical assets, machinery, higher purchases. If, if these NBFCs are financing certain uh, trucks, you can take trucks as well. So if these NBFCs are financing certain physical assets, then they will be known as asset financing company. The second is the loan company. So they, their principal business is to provide finance, whether by way of making loans and advances for activities other than their own. So whatever they are doing, uske alawa koi dusri activities ke liye, agar wo loan provide kar rahe hai, then they will be known as the loan companies. And third and Third talks about investment companies. So investment here means acquisition of securities. So any kind of financial institution whose principal business is to acquire security, is to provide for the acquisition of securities, then these companies will be known as investment companies. I hope these three uh, different special kind of NBFCs are clear to you and together they constitute the ICC, investment and credit company. Now the last important topic that is core investment companies. Naam se hi clear hai, these are those companies or those NBFCs whose main work or whose principal business 
इज टू फाइनेंस इन्वेस्टमेंट रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज अब इसकी कुछ स्पेसिफिक गाइडलाइंस है दैट हैज बीन इशूड बाई आर बी आई द फर्स्ट इज दैट दे शुड बी रजिस्टर्ड विद एस विद आर बी आई विद एन एसेट साइज ऑफ एटलीस्ट हंड्रेड करोर इफ एन एन बी एफ सी हैविंग मोर देन हंड्रेड करोर एस इट्स एसेट साइज दैन सच एन बी एफ सीज विल बी नोन एज सी आई सी कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनीज एंड देयर मेन और देयर प्रिंसिपल बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज शुड बी एक्विजिशन ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज मे बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ शेयर डिबेंचर्स प्रेफरेंस शेयर लोन्स डेथ एक्सेट्रा नाउ ऑफ दिस एक्विजिशन एटलीस्ट नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ इट्स टोटल एसेट्स शुड बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन इक्विटी शेयर प्रेफरेंस शेयर बोन्स डिबेंचर्स डेट लोन्स इन ग्रुप कंपनीज अब ग्रुप कंपनीज क्या होती हैं वेरी क्लियर वेरी सिंपल ग्रुप कंपनीज आर दो कंपनीज विच आर रिलेटेड टू इच अदर इन सम फॉर्म ऑर दी अदर सो इट इज काइंड इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ अरेंजमेंट वे बाय कंपनीज आर रिलेटेड टू इच अदर बाय वे ऑफ सब्सिडरीज ज्वाइंट वेंचर्स एनी काइंड ऑफ एसोसिएट promoter promoti for listed companies or related party com- having a common brand name or investment in equity of more than 20% share so if any company is having 20 a stake of more than 20% in any other company then that company will also be related to this company so these together are known as group companies to yahan pe yahi bola hai that of your total assets agar aapke paas minimum 100 crore rupees hain then out of these 90% should be in the form of investments in equity preference debenture debts or loans in these kinds of group companies uske baad bola gaya hai now investments in equity shares specifically should be at least 60% to jitna bhi aapka total asset hai uska 60% should be in equity shares rest you can put in other kinds of securities and finally it also accepts public funds i hope this is clear to you simple now let's move forward to the question so we have a lots of questions for today for you to answer in the comment section the first question says what is the wma limit that has been decided by rbi and the government for the second half of the financial year 2023 very simple factual questions however such questions are being asked in the examination and these are one marker question ठीक है आंसर करना कमेंट सेक्शन में मूविंग फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन एज सिंपल एस इट कुड बी इट सेज वॉट डज डब्ल्यू एम ए स्टैंड फॉर सो वॉट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ डब्ल्यू एम ए इट हैज बीन सीन रिपीटेडली इन द प्रीवियस इयर्स पेपर्स दैट क्वेश्चन ऑन फुल फॉर्म और एब्रीविएशन हैज बीन आस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए एस बी ए का फुल फॉर्म पूछा गया था एंड दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज फॉर टू मार्क्स सो यू मस्ट बी नोइंग द फुल फॉर्म्स एज वेल or very simple we have already discussed you need to answer in the comment section moving forward to the third question the question says consider and identify the correct statements three statements are given to you first it says that it is a long term loan facility for the government with rbi so these question talks about wma so the word wma is missing here however it is there in the third statement so it says wma is a long term loan facility for the government with rbi second it says the facility is exclusive to the union government only and third rbi charges interest equal to the repo rate on loans given under wma you need to identify the correct statement moving forward to the fourth question the question says what is the applicable interest rate in case of wma extended to the central government becomes an overdraft so any kind of wma extended to the central central government and if it becomes an overdraft what is the applicable interest rate again very simple question moving forward to the next question the question says what is the applicable interest rate on special drawing facility under wma as discussed these special drawing facilities are the loans which are provided by rbi against certain collateral ठीक है तो व्हाट इज द एप्लीकेबल इंटरेस्ट रेट यू मस्ट बी नोइंग इट नेक्स्ट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्केल बेस्ड रेगुलेशन दैट इज अडवाइज स्केल रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क फॉर एनबीएफसी द टॉप टेन एलिजिबल एनबीएफसी इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एसेट साइज विल ऑलवेज रिसाइड इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग लेयर्स ऑफ एनबीएफसी इन रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एनी अदर फैक्टर अगेन वेरी सिंपल गेट इंपॉर्टेंट 
Next question. The last question for today. The question says which of the following is not a qualitative parameter used for identifying an NBFC as an upper layer NBFC. So the parameters that I discussed both the quantitative and the qualitative you need to identify the uh, quantitative factor which is not a qualitative parameter. Very simple please answer it down in the comment section. I have already provided you with the answers. The PDF will be shared to you over the tel telegram group. In case of any doubt, you can always write it down in the comment section or over the discussion forum. This was all for today. I hope you enjoyed the session and keep learning. Bye-bye.